Now, in the last movie, we saw how that one of the values inside that file super global array is the error code that gets returned. In this movie, I want to take a little closer look at the possible error codes you could get back and talk about how to handle them effectively. First, let's look at the list. There are eight possible errors that we could get back. Now, the first is not actually an error. It's error zero means that there were no errors. So in that case, there's actually seven. And if we take a look, each one of those in the first column, we have the name of the error. In the second column, we have the number of the error. It's not really a name. The first one is actually a constant. It's a constant in all capitals that's equal to the value of the number. So we can use either one for checking. We can say, if we get back upload error OK, or if we get back zero, then take this action. So both of them will work for us. I find it's a little easier to work with the named ones than it is the numbers. But if you find it's easier for you the other way around, that's fine. And then the third column there explains what each of the errors are. So we've seen the first one. The second one, the INI size error, means that the upload was larger than what was specified in the PHP INI file. So we could either increase that or we could return an error saying, hey, sorry, that file's too large. Now, error number two says that the form size was too large, which means that that max file size value we sent, it went over that number. So we have the ability to check for both. Did it go over our max file size? And did it go over the PHP size? Error number three is that there was a partial upload. The file didn't finish. Error four would be that no file was sent at all. You'll notice that error number five is missing from the sequence. That's an old error that's gone now. Error number six, though, is that there's no temporary directory. And number seven is that we can't write to the disk. There's a read-write problem, permissions problem, probably. And the last one's a little bit obscure, but it says that there's some kind of an extension that's stopping the file upload. So we would know to troubleshoot then our extensions, which is something we haven't talked about yet. You can also always get a full list of these on the PHP website, and I've put the URL down there where you can look those up. But what I want to move on to show you now is how we can effectively handle the errors and give the user some nice messages back. Essentially, what we want to do is convert the results we get from either column one or column two into column three that we can return as a nice message to the user. So I've found that the best way to do that is to define an array, which is just going to be called upload errors. And it's an associative array that contains those names that we just saw with a message. And then we have the ability to look up the error and output the message, find the key, return the value. And that will then allow me to give something nice back to the user. And we can try that even now without having done anything else by just simply finding that error inside file upload error, and then using that as the key or the index for where we would find the message that it should return. And then we've already set up message down here so that it will return the message. Let's try it. So let me just bring up Firefox. And here I am with upload.php. I'm going to browse again to that same file we did before, file test.txt. You can put anything you want at all, doesn't matter. And then say upload. So here we are. You'll see that the error it gave was zero, and it came back and returned no errors to us. Now let's just try this time without browsing for anything at all. All right, leave it blank and just hit upload. You'll see it came back with error four, and the error was no file. Now we could also try uploading files that we know were too large or setting some of those maximum values lower just to see if we could try and get back all those errors. But I don't think it's really necessary. We know that it's working now. We know that that feature is working. And that's what I wanted to show you is that here's a way to gracefully handle those errors that we give back to the user. Now that we have a better understanding of the error codes, in the next movie, let's go back to looking at how we can work with those uploaded files, specifically how we can move them out of the temporary directory into whatever directory we want to work with them and keep them in.